introducing yourself, your name and your role, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name's Paula Beach. I'm Stroke Nurse Consultant at Salford Royal Foundation Trust. So the nurse consultant role is a blended role of about 50% clinical contact time and then 50% lots of teaching and development, service development time and a bit of research as well. So I'm predominantly clinically focused at the rehab end of the pathway. I work very much on the stroke rehab board with the rehab team and the stroke association there and I lead the multidisciplinary team meeting that happens every week for planning, rehab and discharge planning. Brilliant. What impact do you think the Stroke Association service has for stroke survivors and carers? I think it's a really sort of fundamental part of what we do as a team. I mean, certainly um, in Salford, they've very much been a long-term part of our stroke team and integral to what we do. And I guess what they give patients and carers is they give both information but emotional support from somebody who is linked to the professional team that's looking after them but is if you like a more maybe a slightly friendlier or less threatening lay face but somebody who is still knowledgeable about stroke and its impacts and the various things that can help you. They certainly link into the professional team and then link with the families and will spend time individually with patients and families talking about their particular concerns, providing them with information about their stroke, linking them to services that are available locally and also bringing back sort of concerns and needs that they may identify back to the professional team, which obviously patients and families could raise with the professional team but sometimes you know, it's supportive and helpful to have that link person as well to advocate and help communicate those issues. Brilliant. Um, how, did, how, was it, how did it support the clinical team? They have a role I would say right through the pathway certainly on, in the hospital service they will meet with patients and their family members on the wards both the acute stroke unit and the stroke rehab unit so they will introduce themselves to patients and families, explain their role, provide information leaflets that may be helpful to them. How they make those linkages to people is by interaction with the team, they will sometimes come on ward rounds so that they can be brought up to speed with where people are up to and be introduced to them. Um, they also attend our weekly multidisciplinary team meetings so they know where people are up to in terms of their rehab progress and discharge planning and will sometimes take on actions from that meeting to offer some additional support to families. They also attend family case conferences, perhaps not every single family case conference. The family case conference is a small meeting where the patient and family, as appropriate, will meet with the therapy team to talk about where they're up to with goals and progress and what the desires are about where you want to be discharged to and what's needed for that. And whilst they may not attend every single one of those, they certainly come into quite a few of them, particularly where we've identified there's a need for quite a bit of information and emotional support because they can then back up what's been said in that meeting or talk through issues with families that they may want to go over again after meetings. Many of our patients need to go on to 24-hour care, which involves them going through something called the continuing health care process, which is a very in-depth process to assess people's individual needs that requires kind of at least two quite large team meetings where there's paperwork to be filled in and I would say that can be a very emotional process for families it's a process that's about being transparent but it can be quite quite challenging and emotionally draining to be sitting and going through the personal care needs of your loved one and I think the Stroke Association can be a really great supportive tool as being a non-professional person that can sit alongside families in that process, you know, reassure them that everything's been addressed appropriately or support them in thinking about questions or concerns that they want to raise in that process. I guess that summarises kind of the role as during the inpatient part of the pathway. I think what's really critical is that the stroke station really is the link into the community there the one kind of team member that follows people through from the acute setting in hospital into wherever they may end up, whether it's in their own home or a 24-hour care setting in the community. So they offer continuity, if you like, a familiar face, somebody that they're used 
to see in. Within the community, they will do visits to people in their own home a couple of weeks after discharge, and then at six months to offer the formal six month re review that we're supposed to do for people now. That's actually a commissioned service for the Stroke Association here in Salford, and they deliver that using a tool called the GM SAT, which they were integral to developing. Um, and I think that gives us a really robust way of capturing people's needs rather than say just relying on primary care staff to do that as well. For people who are going through community rehab services, whether that's early supported discharge or more longer term community neuro rehab, they're also in the same way that they're an integral part of our team in the inpatient setting, they're also a part of that community rehab team. So again, they can act as a link between patients and family members and the rehab team in the community and they do an awful lot of work particularly around emotional support and work quite closely with the clinical psychologist to produce and um, to provide like level one and two emotional support when people might not need to see a clinical psychologist but they do need some support in terms of coping with their stroke and how it's impacting on them emotionally. Brilliant. What do you think the impact would be if the service was cut or if it was unavailable? I think it would be huge, particularly in this locality in Salford, because we've had this long-term relationship with the Stroke Association and they really are integral to our teams and our way of working. Um, I'd be surprised if another provider could provide the same level of service and particularly to provide that very quickly if there was a changeover. Um, if you like, there's, there's a relationship there now between professionals who work in Stroke in Salford and the Stroke Association and an alternative provider would have to build that relationship with us over time. As I said, if you look at initiatives like the GM SAT, which is the assessment tool used at six months, the Stroke Association were intimately involved in the development of that tool, so they understand it, they know it inside out and can apply it and they're involved in the further ongoing refinement and development of it. And you just couldn't, I believe, I don't think you could get that same level of service straight away with a different provider. Uh, is there any kind of example of the service making a difference to people that you're aware of? Um, I can think of um, a family at the moment that we're working with in the inpatient setting. Um, it's quite a large family and mum's had a moderate to severe stroke. Mum was really very much the centre of this family, that the family revolves around her, so it's been a huge, huge impact to see Mum affected by a stroke in the way she has been. Um, she's been with us through quite a long stay, and as I say, she's going through this complex, continuing healthcare process. And I know that the Stroke Association Family Support Workers have been able to, as I've described earlier, be there as an additional person to meet with the family between the formal meetings we have on the ward, to talk through what's been happening and what's coming next, to offer feedback and support about. I know this family has certainly checked in with the family support workers, you know, do you think we've asked the right questions at that meeting? Have we done everything? They're very concerned that they do everything that they must do to make sure mum gets the best care. And I think the family support workers have been able to offer that reassurance and support around those concerns of that family. Um, I think also they're able sometimes to facilitate, they've certainly facilitated a discharge to a home setting of a lady recently that perhaps wouldn't have, she probably would have gone to the home care setting but it would have been very difficult to come back for outpatient review and the Stroke Association have been able to offer us an additional level of support that they would go in for an extra visit to that family and check that things were going okay and feedback any concerns to us as a team. And again, I think it's about continuity, a familiar face and the support everybody can come back to us as a service to ask questions but I think the Stroke Association back that up and support it by being a direct link between um, patients and families and professional services Brilliant you looking Look at you, not the camera Right, okay Okay, so do you want to just start us off with um, your name and your role within the Stroke Association please? Okay. Hello, my name is Pippa Tyrrell. I'm a professor of stroke medicine at the University of Manchester and I'm a consultant stroke physician at Salford Royal Foundation Trust. Brilliant. Uh, what impact do you think the Stroke Association service has had for stroke survivors and carers? 
The Stroke Association services have an immense impact. I've worked with them in all the years I've been here at Salford, so I've been working with them for nearly 20 years here, and I've seen over many years the extraordinary impact that they have on patients and carers with stroke. They're able to come into the ward, they're able to work with us on the wards, uh, work with patients and in particular work with their families. And then when we're planning discharge they're able to uh, discuss with families about how it's going to be when they get home. If we have patients who need to go to nursing home or residential home, they have a major input in terms of helping people to make the right choices for them. And then we uh, and then, then the... Uh, sorry, on, sorry. should I start again? Um, you can go from there, it's fine. Okay. When patients have gone home, it's often the most difficult time for them and their families. They really feel lost in a void because they have lots of input when they're in hospital and then suddenly they get home and there's no one. There may be a therapist coming a few times a week, but you're on your own when you're at home. And the one person, the one element of continuity from the hospital to home is the Stroke Association Information Advice Support Coordinator, who can be in contact by phone, who can visit you at home or in your residential home or nursing home, and who can help you to negotiate the very difficult path from being a patient in hospital to eventually becoming a person again in your own right and reintegrating back into the community. Because the Stroke Association have been here for so long, they're an immense source of information and advice. They've seen so many patients go through the system. They've seen what happens to so many different people that they're able to really go give good, sensible, really human advice to patients specific to stroke. They have so much stroke knowledge, they're so well trained and they work so effectively that they're really able to help patients make that transition from hospital to reintegration back into normal life. Brilliant. Um, how does it support the clinical team? Without the Stroke Association Information Advice Support Coordinators, I think it would be really hard for us to function. We are able to signpost patients and carers to the Stroke Association very early on because they come in and work on the wards, they come on ward rounds with us, and sometimes you might be left with a patient who's really very distressed and you're able to ask the Stroke Association worker to, to work with that patient there and then. And often that can relieve distress very quickly amongst patients and carers and it can really resolve the situation. They're able to take information from patients and carers that perhaps those people wouldn't normally share with the clinical team. So they're able to feed back into our care a lot more information about the patient than, than we would have otherwise. And they're immensely supportive in terms of discharge. Discharges would happen much more slowly if it weren't for the Stroke Association team. Lynn, what do you suppose the impact would be if the service was cut or unavailable? It would be a disaster. It would be a disaster. We have so much expertise here, so much expertise built up over so many years, such a wonderful team that is part of the National Stroke Association. So not only are they a great team here in Salford, but because they're part of the National Stroke Association, they receive their training, they're able to access information, uh, able to access um, information documentation, to really allow our patients to access the full range of expertise that's available from the Stroke Association. As clinicians, we would find it really hard to work with our patients. In hospital, most of the complaints that we receive are about communication. We receive sometimes very expensive complaints. Nobody told me, no one explained, no one listened to what I was saying. Our Stroke Association team are able to help us communicate better with our patients, which reduces the numbers of complaints that we receive, it helps us to look after the patients better, 
it helps support the carers because we're reliant on carers for our patients going home and it helps support the patient so that they feel confident that it's going to be okay at home. Confident but realistic about what the challenges are going to be and confident that the Stroke Association team are going to be able to help them through that. So without the Stroke Association team it would be much more difficult to look after our patients. Our patients and carers would be would have uh, less communication, less opportunity to, to share some of their fears and concerns, that we as a clinical team would find it very difficult, discharges would be more difficult, and in particular, we know that our patients would not feel well supported in the community. So it's absolutely vital that this fantastic service is allowed to continue and flourish. Good. Is there any kind of example you can give me of the difference that the Stroke Association has made to a patient? One of the things that we have worked with the Stroke Association over, over um, the last few years is the development of a stroke assessment tool for patients at six months following stroke. We know from talking to our patients that after they're discharged they see community therapists perhaps for a few months and then they're left on their own and they really don't know where they are. And we were told by the National Stroke Strategy and by another, a number of other government strategies that we needed to develop uh, a, a post-stroke assessment. And it was only by working with the Stroke Association and with our local patients and carers that we were able to really develop that tool that's now been taken up across the country. And I know that there are people who I have seen who have had continuing problems at around six months when they've been discharged by all the community teams where the GP perhaps doesn't perhaps understand the complexity of the problem they're suffering from and then they have their stroke assessment, their, their um, holistic whole patient assessment done by the Stroke Association team and they're able then to be signposted into appropriate care and certainly I've seen patients who've had residual problems such as overwhelming tiredness, pain, concentration difficulties who have been effectively discharged by the community teams but have been able to be signposted to the right information and care by their Stroke Association six month assessment. Brilliant, thank you very much. Is that alright? Is that what you no. sell? Right. Right um, what you might want to do though is Same put name. the paper down and then read it because when you're rubbing the paper you can do it, pick it up on the right side. My name is Kathleen Playfair. I am an Information, Advice and Support Coordinator working here in Salford. The Information and Advice Support Coordinators offer a high quality evidence-based information, a listening ear, emotional support and practical advice for stroke survivors and their families. The Information, Advice and Support team here in Salford support stroke survivors and their carers in their adjustments and adaptations post-stroke. We explain the effects of stroke, the impact, offering practical help and advice and support to individuals and their families. We offer stroke survivors throughout the stroke care pathway here in Salford, from hospital to home, for up to 12 months post-hospital discharge. We have a presence on the wards on a daily basis. We are very much involved with the multidisciplinary team in Salford Royal, involved in discharge planning, attending family case conferences and multidisciplinary team meetings for patients and their families. We work alongside other health and social care professionals and other local services and local charities such as Basic, Heart Start Groups, Age UK, Job Centre Plus and the Salford Princess Trust Carers Centre. We also have professional and strong links with Health Watch and Salford CVS. The team have the ability to support people to accept personal and practical limitations following their stroke. The coordinators support real life issues and challenges due to stroke. 
some of the concerns and anxieties following stroke for some of our stroke survivors are housing, employment issues, family and family relationship problems, emotional support, social isolation, just to name a few. We work with clients and their carers to enable them to engage in local community and voluntary groups throughout Salford. We have a strong professional links with health and social care agencies in Salford, utilising our knowledge to enhance the health and well-being of individuals affected by stroke. Coordinators carry out effective six months post-stroke hospital discharge reviews using a validated assessment tool in line with the Stroke Association for frameworks. As a team, we are aware of the socio-economic difficulties individuals have living here in Salford, with the increase in unemployment, council housing, bedroom tax, food banks, and the high incidence of health conditions um, such as high blood pressure, obesity, alcohol abuse, poor diet, lack of exercise and depression. These are just some of the problems that people can encounter post-stroke and we are here as a team to support them through that journey of recovery. The team work in partnership with the clinical psychologists here in Salford as we find that post-discharge families and clients are emotionally overwhelmed with the effects of the devastating physical effects of their stroke. We provide emotional support for clients and their carers. The team contributes to the emotional impact of stroke. The Life After Stroke campaign, uh, we were fortunate enough to raise the profile of stroke services here in Salford by attending the House of Commons in July for a parliamentary reception to the launch of this campaign. Is that okay? That's perfect. Lovely. If you wanted to 